Hi, it's Corrine, and I'm here today for Cut at Home. I'd like to share with you this Spellbinders Card Creator die. This one is the A2 Bracket Borders 1 die. And a few weeks ago on my channel, I showed a wedding album, and in that wedding album, I had made a pocket with this die, and in that video, I stated that I used a die that I got from Cut at Home, but I didn't show how I made the pocket. And since that video aired, I've had several requests showing how I used it, so I'd like to share that with you today, how I did that. And Cut at Home has several different shapes and um, choices of these dies. So check out their blog. I'll have the link listed in the description box as always. And I'll have links to all the different ones that you can choose from, from Spellbinders. So this one comes with seven dies. And it's made to fit an A2 size card. So as you can see, there is an example there. And it just gives a perfect border to your card, which is great. And I've used it on a card. I've also used it on a mini album. But I want to show you, like I said, I received some requests asking to show how I used it in a mini album. So let me flip through these. Now with these dies, there are seven. And four of them actually cut the shape out. So these four here actually cut the shape. This one is your, your typical bracket die. This one has stitch marks. This one has little triangles. And this one has um, pin marks. So it's like a stitched edge. These three here are just decorative. So you can pair them with one of the edge dies, or if you don't want it to cut through at all and you just want to give the edge of your card this design, you can do that as well. So, Or you can pair them together just like this and it will give it a decorative edge and then it will also cut the edge for you. So for today's video, I have a photo of a pocket that I used in a mini album using this die here and I will show you a picture of that now. So that's the pocket that I made using this, and I'm going to show you exactly how I did that today. So here is a mini album that I am just starting to work on, so it's obviously not put together. This is the cover, and then this is the inside of my mini album. So I'm using this as an example. I also have a video showing how I make a mini album from start to finish. I will put that in the description box below as well. It's a four-part tutorial, so if you're interested in that. Um, it doesn't show this size. This is an 8x8 mini album, but it shows you um, a little bit smaller mini album, but once you get the basics, you can make the mini album any size you choose. So none of this has been worked on yet. However, I'm showing you this page here. So what I did is I just cut a piece of the pattern paper and I'm adding a pocket to the bottom here. Therefore, I didn't need my paper to go all the way down and it saves a little bit of paper when you do it that way. So what I need is a piece of paper for my pocket. Okay, and I'm gonna use the back side of this paper, as you can see here. I am also going to be using a piece of scrap, um, scrap black paper, and that's going to um, be part of my pocket as well. So for right now, the first thing I need to do is cut down both of these pieces of paper to match the size of this, which is 6 and 7 eighths. So I will set this aside for the moment. And I'm going to cut down my black piece to 6 and 7 eighths and also my pattern piece to 6 and 7 eighths. I'm not going to worry too much about the height. I'm just going to take a little bit of it off for right now, but we will fix that at the end. Again, cutting this to 6 and 7 eighths. And I'm going to take a little bit of this off. You want to cut a little bit more than what you think you need, so I think that'll be fine for now. Okay. 
And now what I like to do is take my T-square ruler, you can use any ruler that you have, and just add a line going across, a straight line going across the entire top. So that's just going to give me a point of reference of where I need to line my die up to. Okay, so now I want to take my die, let me zoom in just a little bit here. And if you're using a pattern paper, you want to work on the back side since you're marking it with a pencil. You don't want to work on the side that will be showing. So what I do is just simply, I need to mark the center of my paper. So I'm going to take my Tim Holtz ruler and find the center. Okay, and now that I found the center, I'm going to mark that. And now I will again use my T-square ruler and bring that line down to right here where I have my straight line. So now I can line my die up. right to where I found, like I said, I found the center right there. I want to line my die up to the center. I am going to use these little notches right here on this side to line up to my straight line right here. I'm going to do that on both this side and this side. So let me bring those up, line them up, and I will be using a little bit of washi tape to hold my die in place because I don't want it moving once it goes through my die cut machine. Okay, I'm going to try and keep the tape out of the way of where the lines that I want to show you. So what I'm looking for is that my the center of my die is lined up with my line right here, which is the center of this paper, and this little notch right here is lined up to the top of my line, and the same little notch right here is lined up to the top of the line. Okay, so that's going to be the same on both. And now I'm going to run it through my die cut machine. I'm using a Sizzix Big Shot. I have my multi-platform plate. I have a cutting plate and the other cutting plate. Now let me remove my tape. Okay, and here is what we have. So now, because the die was not long enough, we need to go ahead and cut it to so it cuts all the way across. So I'm simply just going to line up my die on this side. And again, using that line that I drew across, I'm going to use that as a guide. This part does not have to be perfect. Sometimes I angle them up, which gives me a higher arch, and sometimes I angle them down. Just kind of play around with it to see what you like. So I'm happy with that there. Tape that on and run it back through. And now you can see it cut all the way through on that side. I'm going to do the exact same on this side over here. And if 
how you angled it down there, you want to try and angle it similar on this side. Again, this does not have to be perfect. And here we have our pocket. So I'm going to do the exact same thing with my pattern paper and I will put it in fast play while I do so. Okay, so here is the finished pocket. So we can now match up our pieces and they should match up pretty well. And look how easy that was. So it gives a great pocket. So now what I like to do is take it over to my book and just kind of measure it out to where how high I want the pocket to be. I think I'm going to have it go to there. I'll just mark it with my pencil. Take it to my trimmer and cut it down. And same with my decorative piece. I want a tiny border on the top and bottom, so actually that's perfect. I won't even need to trim this piece down. That's perfect. So the first thing I want to do is use my Angel Craft tape to adhere this decorative piece down to the solid piece. You could actually make this a double pocket if you wanted to and leave this top part open right here, but I'm going to adhere it down. And what I like to do when I have a decorative piece is use my strong tape, this adhesive, but I also like to add a little wet glue for the decorative part because I want to make sure that's adhered down well. And then to center it, I will just match it up to the center of my die. And press it down once I'm happy with it. So now I'll bring back over my page. And for the pocket, you want to glue down the bottom and the two sides I like to use wet glue for this, that way whatever tags you're placing in there, they do not get stuck on uh, dry adhesive or tape. And 
using wet adhesive also gives you a moment to kind of move it around to make sure it's exactly where you want. So you just really want to press down the sides and the bottom, make sure that it is adhered well. I like to give that a moment to dry. And there is your pocket for your mini album page. So if you have any other questions, please leave me a comment. I will place a link down in the description box. And like I said, check out Cut at Home's blog. I will have several of these type of dies listed. But again, the one I use today is the A2 Bracket Borders one. And as you can see, it's not just for cards. You can use it for scrapbook pages or mixed media, smashbook pages, whatever you want a nice border on. It gives you a beautiful border. So for those of you that requested this video, I hope this answers your questions. And thanks so much for stopping by today.